What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 105.5 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King. What's up, good people? Bet Online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BLEAV, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online when the game starts. Man show here with the new head coach of San Houston State, the Bearcats out of Huntsville, Texas, an hour from Houston down there in the Great State of Texas. It's Coach Chris Bud on the Boss Man Show. Coach Mud, good to see you, man. How you doing, man? I'm great, man. Thanks for having me on this morning. No doubt, man. Hey, it's good to talk to somebody that's close to my age, too, man. <laughs> <laughs> You're a spring chicken, man. Yeah, you about the same age, man. <laughs> Yeah, you look about 21 years old, man. I, I feel a lot older than that, losing all this. I wish, man. I wish. <laughs> 40, 40, 40 is calling my name real soon. And it's right around the corner. My wife reminds me of that every day. Yeah. Hey, I feel like I remember where I'm around my God, kids and my kids, man. It's like, man, I ain't nothing I used to be no more. <laughs> <laughs> Things start hurting, man. Just part of it. It's all right, though. We've had some yes. good, good years in the life. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. I can't believe I've been doing this radio show for 15 years almost, man. Really? Man, that's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. It means some people like to listen to you or something. Yeah, starting off doing radio at, at 2 in the morning, bro. Dang. It was me, the truckers, and deers. <laughs> <laughs> that's grinding it out, man. You've taken the steps up. Yeah, I went from 2 a.m. to 11 p.m. to weekends to man. doing my own thing. Uh, shoot, you're going up the ladder. You're gonna be national. Oh, hey, yeah, that's the goal now. That's the goal, buddy. Bobby man. Bones better look out, man. <laughs> yes, indeed, man. Let me ask you, man, how's it feel, man, to be the head coach, man? I know you got hired by Jay Hoot and he we we got his job, man, as the youngest assistant, man, and you grew as well, man. So how does it feel being being the head guy, man, make decisions now? Man, it's it's almost surreal. Like it hasn't really kicked in yet because we've been so busy. I mean, we just had it's been recruiting and getting our guys here and workouts and and getting staff and and maybe it'll settle in eventually because uh, it's just been the work of it. You know, and don't get me wrong, the work is different because as a role as a head coach, a little more CEO, a little more managing, a little more directing as opposed to you know being the the doer of the everyday tasks and things. And so it's been uh, it's been a lot of fun mostly because I love our guys. They're great young men and my staff is amazing. They make all this a lot of fun. And so, you know how it is and anything you're doing, it's it's because you love what you do and you love the people. And we've got great people here and, and that's made it a lot of fun so far. It's been a little stressful. I didn't have a lot of hair before, but I think I've lost a little bit more in this uh, month and a half, whatever it is. And, uh, but it's been great. You know, I've, I've learned under some unbelievable coaches. I mean, Coach Hooten was obviously phenomenal. But, I was, th- I mean, when I was getting ready for my press conference, I was thinking through, uh, you know, Coach Barnes at Texas, obviously a Hall of Famer, incredible. Uh, then the assistants there, 
you know, Chris Ogden, Division One head coach, Rodney Terry, Division One head coach, Russell Springman, Division One head coach, Ken McDonald, Division One head coach, Frank Haith, Division One head coach. Then I go to Midland Junior College. Then I work for Grant McCaslin, Texas Tech head coach, Ross Hodge, North Texas head coach. And that doesn't even count all the assistant coaches that I've worked with who are phenomenal all over the place. And so I just consider it a blessing to have learned from all them. And they're, they're a lot of the reason that I'm here, including our players, uh, who I thank all the time because I wouldn't be here without them. And so it's been fun, man. It's an adjustment for sure. And I know that I'm learning every day and I'll learn every day till the day that I die. But uh, it's been fun, man. I'm excited about what we got going and and mainly the people here, man. We got great guys and uh, that makes coming to work every day a ton of fun. And when you got there, you was in the Southland Conference. They went to the WAC. They going to Carlos USA. In the football, so I was going to FBS. Now, so how cool is it to see the transition from being a Southland job to a whack job to now being Carlos USA, one of the premier it may, it may major conferences in basketball for his good play and quality talent and quality coaching? It's crazy, man. It's like I've had, even as an assistant, it's like I had three jobs without moving houses. I just got to stay in the same place. And it totally changed a lot about the environment of the conference we were in. Now, our program, the university, those kind of things, it's changing remarkably. We're growing like crazy. Our department is growing like crazy. All really good things. But uh, the level of play is uh, has been fun to rise to the challenge because the Southland Conference was phenomenal. People don't realize how good the top part of the Southland Conference was. I mean, you had us and SFA who won games in the tournament three years that we were really good. Uh, against um, uh, Nichols and Corpus. We had some Abilene Christian won games in the tournament. So it was really good. But then you go up to the WAC, which was a big jump. And I didn't realize how big of a jump it was going to be in terms of the talent on rosters and things like that. Obviously, great coaches in the WAC. And all we kept hearing was, you guys can't do it. They picked us seventh and eighth in our two years in the WAC, and I think. And we finished second and tied for first in our two years. And that was one of the biggest things is adjusting to that. But our players helped us do that really well. And the same thing's being said for Conference USA. They say we can't do it again. And that's what's defined us and our program and what's made us really good is that chip on our shoulder of we're going to show you. And we're in that mode again as we move up to one of the best mid-major plus leagues in the country with phenomenal talent, phenomenal coaches, great tradition. All it's going to do is continue to help our program and our department go to the national level because everybody knows what Conference USA did last year in basketball, and the teams have only gotten better. The teams that are returning have improved through coaching, through transfers, through all those things. It's going to be a heck of a league, and it motivates me and drives me to make sure that we are as good as we can be because we're going to have to compete. I mean, it's going to be some grown men in the league, and when you look around, you're like, okay, who is – is there a bad team in the league? Is there a league that we're going to get some easy wins on? And you look through and you go down, down, down. Like, there isn't one. It's going to be a dogfight every single night, whether you're home, whether you're away, it don't matter. You're going to have however many conference games. Every one of them is going to be tough. And that part's fun as a competitor. Um, those easy games, wins are great. Don't get me wrong. But you know, we like the the juice and the energy and tough games and close, close games at the end. And that's where you see how good you really are. So, uh it's an amazing move for our, our department, especially moving up to FBS as well. That changes the profile of our football program and gets us on a national level there. Basketball, we've already been that for a while. So it's uh, it's only good things, and, and I'm excited about this year getting started. And, and how it worked out, I, was, I always t- was told any young man that I, I talked to, for me, when I played ball, not several times when I got better with my teammates to hold me accountable. You know, you and I both know that we have a player-led team, hands on coach leadership and coach effort. You have those that are the best teams. I feel like the whole drive guys accountable on you. We're doing gasses, doing sprints, doing work, 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 weight room work, on doing individual drills on the court. That was pushing you to be better because this time you got, you got one class or two classes max. You are focused yeah. on being a basketball player right now. Yeah, it, it's interesting, man. I'm glad you said that. The best thing you said out of a lot of good things was player-led leadership. And part of the reason that our culture has been so good, and I think as coaches, we've done a good job of that, but culture doesn't continue unless the players are doing it every day. And we've got unbelievable returners. We have six guys coming back who are telling the new guys what it means to be here. And obviously we're holding accountable, but it is so much 
better taken and, and absorbed and understood when the guys that have been here are telling them, hey, you missed that line by an inch. That's not good enough. We don't do that. Or this is the detail you're missing or your energy, or your intensity isn't what it needs to be to be Sam Houston basketball. And over the summer, we're doing a lot of things. We're teaching, we're getting technique, we're getting guys better individually. But the most important thing that's happening right now is our guys are learning what it means to be in Sam Houston basketball and they're learning it the hard way. Cause it's hard. You know, that first summer when you get there, I mean, the first couple of weeks, those guys couldn't raise their arms up to shampoo their hair. I mean, they were struggling, but it's the good struggle and they're getting through it and they're learning how to fight through adversity. And uh, it's been great so far. Our returners have been unbelievable. Our new guys have really risen to the challenge and are, are still learning, which has been really good. And we're kind of putting our own mark on the program and doing things that, is going to build it our way, but continue to have the toughness and the uh, leadership and the winning that we're doing with the new guys and the returners. So it's been a great summer so far. We've seen, I mean, a ton of development. Uh, Our guys are really close. They spend a lot of time together, which is really important. And um, we got another month. Our second session starts July 6th and we'll have everybody here and, you know, kind of see how much of a jump we can make together. So it's, it's a fun time of year right now. 100%. Let me ask you this coach Mudge. Being in Conference USA, I know the calculus changes for non-conference games. So now, now are you buying people? People don't really want to buy you anymore. So now the more maybe two for ones, home and homes. How was that chess match game been going on since you're in Conference USA? First being in the cyber conference, you're just getting bought most of the time, trying to find games. You know, it. Uh, we we've been lucky to be really good here, and uh, you know, last year we beat Oklahoma and Utah. So it definitely was a lot harder to get people to buy us this year because we knocked off a couple of them last year. Uh, and those were really good teams. We just, and we had a good team as well. Uh, scheduling coach Hooten used to do all of it and he wanted to handle it himself and was really good at it. And so I didn't have a ton of experience other than kind of uh, helping here and there with him on it. So it was a new thing for me and something that is totally different than anything else I can do. And so it was a learning curve and it it was fast and I, I love our schedule. It's going to be difficult. It'll be, you know, like normal, like we have been one of the better mid-major pre-conference schedules in the country. And, uh, and, and I'm excited. We're going to get tested. That's for sure. Cause a lot of team, you know, it, it's hard to get games. And so we end up playing a lot of teams that uh, other teams don't want to play either, you know? And so we just end up saying, Hey, we got to play each other. And at the end of the day, that's the fun part of it. That's the part that makes us really good. That's the part to get the best out of us when we go play another team that's going to be in the mid-major top 25 and battle it out. And it's going to make us better beyond that. So I love our schedule. We've got some really good home games, some division one home games. Uh, we got some road games that are super tough, but it's going to test us. And I like that. I like that for our guys. Now I'd say people, I think people lie more in skills than they, they lie in recruiting in my opinion. <laughs> There's a lot of guys that backed out. We've had uh, until the contract signed and the ink is dried. There ain't nothing that's true in scheduling. <laughs> you got that right. And also, you don't realize you're, just, you're really out from Houston. You can draw a circle around Huntsville and find talents. What about recruiting in Texas and finding a good guy playing in Texas round and round where you all at. And also, if we could have been in Commerce USA, which is pretty much USA way it's spread out, yeah. that footprint you could get guys nationally as well. Man, Texas is obviously such a great basketball state. I mean, there are so many Dallas, Houston, Austin, San Antonio, everywhere in between. Uh, There's players, a lot of places. And part of what's made us really good is having good Texas players. And Texas gets recruited by everywhere in the country for a reason. And there are other states that have great basketball too. uh, But, man, Texas is loaded. And so that's fun to watch. Like they had the TABC high school tournament last weekend, which had most of the high school teams in the state. God, there was so much talent on display. It was fun to watch. I mean, really good coaches, really good players. And so we built our program with really good Texas kids, but we've also been able to get guys from all over the country and all over the world. I mean, we have a a guy from Canada, two guys from Australia, uh, guys from all over to just build that puzzle piece of things. And, And with the way the portal works and the way the international recruiting is now, you can build a team with people from everywhere and just finding the best guys and, Moving up to Conference USA, you know, every level you go up, there's less guys that are good enough. And so you got to make sure you're getting the right kind of guys. And so you might have to spread out a little bit more to be able to find this guy or that guy. And and it's also important to find the toughness 
and the identity, the factor that fits into us. And Texas kids have that. Um, but there's lots of other places. I mean, Atlanta kids have that. New York kids. I mean, Chicago. You can go a lot of different places and find really tough kids. And that's what's been really good for us because uh, those guys, those guys fit and those guys win games. And oh, recruiting has it's changed a little bit in terms of what is good enough, but it hasn't changed in terms of what we look for, the intangibles we need, uh, and what uh, is inside of them, not just on the outside of them that takes them. Because there's some guys that have helped us win a lot of games that might have a little less talent, but they got way bigger heart. They got way bigger toughness. And that's part of why we've been so good. And we got to keep that going. Excuse me, Coach Mudge. I, I, don't, I, I, I don't know Jay Hood ever told you something about me, but my, my, my dad is a coach too. He's 84 oh, years really? old. Yes. I'm That's a coach's awesome. kid. So, so I saw on Father's Day, like, all the guys we played for, play for him, text and call for him. I'm taking him to all these guys' weddings and different things, seeing their kids. So, for you, man, like, what was your why getting the coaching? And when did when, you when, 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 know that you wanted to become a coach? You know, it's funny you say that. I didn't, I didn't know I wanted to get into coaching. I went to the University of Texas as a chemical engineer and uh, thought I was done with basketball. Um, I thought I was going to play intramural sports and that was going to be about it. Just do it for fun. And uh, man, uh, about a couple weeks into school, you know, I could feel that God had a place in my heart that was missing. There was something that was not complete. And he was telling me that you've got to find, there's something else you're missing. Your purpose is not being fulfilled at the moment. And so I, I thought about it. I talked about it. I prayed about it. And uh, my mom had been a manager at the university of Texas when they won the NIT. And she's like, why don't you try this out? You know, you've loved basketball since you were yay big. And so I went and tried and within a week of volunteering uh, in the office, and I wasn't even fully with the team at the time I was getting coffee. I was licking envelopes. I was doing mail outs, um, just doing whatever I could to get started. I just knew, you know, you know, that feeling of knowing that you're in the right place for the right mm -hmm. reason, with the right intent. And I just knew then, and it was uh it just a light went off. And so that's when I knew. And, but over time, obviously you learn about, you know, not just the fun part of being a coach. Cause that was a fun time to be around Texas basketball. I mean, Texas basketball was really taken off. That was TJ Ford's year going to the final four. They obviously, we obviously were really good after that. And so that part is fun, but that's not the lasting part of this. And um, over time, you see that, like you said, those relationships and the, the people is what matters in all this, you know, God put us here as coaches, to lead young men to figure out life. And it's a 40 year, 50 year relationship, not just a four year one. And so that's the thing that's been really cool is over time to see how relationships develop and change. I mean, when I first got here to Sam Houston, I was only a couple years older than some of these guys, but they're also guys that have been able to see develop and grow into men and dads and husbands and uh, businessmen and create a life for themselves. And I absolutely love that. I mean, the guys that I stay in touch with, it's now long enough. We've been here at Sam 13 years, was coaching Juco for a couple of years. Those guys are all, you know, they played pro for a while and now they're into the next phase of their life and seeing that we've been a part of helping them set that up where they can have a great job, have their own company. They got a, a beautiful wife, wonderful kids and they're great dads, man, that's way more meaningful than wins and losses. And don't get me wrong. We're hired and fired off wins and losses, but we are not judged by God, by wins and losses. We are judged by the effect, by the leadership and being the Christian leader that he calls us to be, not just saying that we are. And so I absolutely love when those guys call. I mean, we I had a former player uh, call me at 10 o'clock last Friday night. And I, I answered thinking, you know, like, man, something's wrong. He just wanted to talk. And it had been, you know, it'd been like two months since we had talked and he just wanted to talk. And I feel blessed and lucky that we have that relationship that he feels like he can do that still. And uh, if I can have that impact, if I can help these guys figure out life, whether we win or lose on the court, we're going to win or lose. I mean, we're going to win in life. And that um, that's the eternal win that we go look for. And we've been lucky to also have great young men that want to have a relationship and want you to be close and want a family atmosphere like we have here. And, uh, that's part of the reason it's been so good to stay here and be here and with coach Hooten and with their other coaches and players. And, uh, we're striving to keep that going for sure. It's funny you say that because I'm going to tell you a quick story. Last year, late point in Atlanta, uh, doing the an honor event, one of the college basketball insiders who I won't name was very upset with me because coaches were all smiling and talking talk, talk, talk to me. 
that's all yeah. talking to me about. Just was having a good time, having a good time, shoot, shoot, shooting the breeze, right? And I said to him, I said, well, I'm gonna tell you why they happen to be around me. I'm not transactional. I'm trying to get information out of them, and I'm a real person. When they yeah. have games, I take some great game, great win. But I, I'm actually their friend and a support system that does not want something from them. Yeah, so they're happy to be around me and talk to me and smile. Not like with you. What what what, what do you want now? Right. But that's yeah. that's my whole thing, Coach Mudge. I want to use my platform to help you all because a lot of times people don't, don't talk to you all. It's so you when you win a lot or something bad happens. I want to talk yeah. to you just because I want to talk to you. <laughs> no <laughs> doubt, no doubt. That's what real friendships and real people matter no matter and it's hard in life and in business and in this business especially like you said very transactional uh, but there's lots of good people and appreciate you for that no doubt coach mudge it's been a great time to meet you man having the show man jay who said you'll be great and he did not he did not disappoint him he said you would be great you were oh, great man and i, I appreciate you so much man. I, man i'm gonna be down at lake point uh for the live period so we got to get together I'm gonna get you. I'm gonna get my number offline, so you'll have we'll get you together. I'll be there all, all four days too, as well. So we'll see each other. It's one of them books. We'll see each other, man. <laughs> Perfect, man. Well, thanks for having me on. I really appreciate you. Anytime, bub. What's up, good people? Bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs. The latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Better Online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wages, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use your promo code BELIEVE, B-L-E-A-V, for your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet Online. When the game starts. What's up, family? Jared the Boss Man here. You're tuned into the Boss Man Show on AM 1010, AM 1430, 1055 The King. Get the King out at 105theking.com and the Boss Man Show at bossmanshow.com. Hit me up on Instagram, the Boss Man Show, Twitter at Boss Man Show, and Facebook, Boss Man Show. It's the Boss Man on your Radio. Listen to the Boss Man Show with your host, JR, Saturdays at 9 a.m. right here on AM 1010, The King.